What's up YouTube? Hope you are doing fantastic. I'm back with another color grading tutorial and this time I'm going to create that dreamy portrait look with some vintage classic vibes and I want to keep that soft look in the footage. Most of the process was done using DaVinci Resolve tools but in order to achieve that final filmic look I used my favorite plugin Dehancer. And if you are interested you can still use my coupon code MehranHD in order to get 10% off on your first Enhancer plugin purchase. No more talking, let's jump into the DaVinci Resolve and see what we can achieve. So I have imported the footage into the DaVinci Resolve and it was shot in 4K 50p using the Sony a7 IV and it was conformed to 25 frames per second using this option and now I want to create a timeline using this clip. I want to call it tutorial and I want to turn off the use project settings and for the format I want to change the timeline frame rate to 25 frames per second and for the timeline color space I want to select the DaVinci White Gamut Intermediates. Now we go to the color tab and for this tutorial I want to create 9 nodes. The first one is going to be CST. The second one is going to be exposure and balance. Third one is going to be contrast. Fourth one is going to be color slice. Then we have soften and sharpen. Then we have the sharpening node. Then we create vignette. Then we have the last CST. And at last we have the dehancer node. So I want to start with the CST node so we convert this footage from the S-Log tree to Rec 709. So I choose the color space transform for the first node and also the last CST again I want to choose the color space transform and here for the first one I will select the input color space as the S gamut tree because it is the color space for the S log tree picture profile and I select the Sony S log tree and for the output color space I want to select the DaVinci white gamut because we are going to work in the DaVinci white gamut zone so we have much more flexibility and for the last CST again I want to select the input color space as DaVinci white gamut because here between these two nodes we are working in DaVinci white gamut and I select the gamma as the DaVinci intermediate and now for the output I'm going to select the Rec 709 which will be our exported footage in Rec 709 and we convert it from the S-Log tree to Rec 709 and we get a decent color here in order to work out in the DaVinci white gamut zone. As you see the footage is converted properly to Rec 709 and it is ready to be color corrected and then color graded. So we start with the exposure and balance and I use the HDR wheels for this option because it gives you so much flexibility and I want to decrease the exposure a little bit because it was shot a little bit overexposed so we have much more details and less noise when recording the video I want to decrease it around here. For the saturation I do not want to add so much saturation to this video because I want to focus more on the tones rather than the colors so I just add a tad bit of saturation around around 1.05 I think it's enough and for the temperature I want to add a little bit of magenta to this skin to make it more towards the magenta because it was really greenish and a little bit of blue not so much so we have both magenta and a good amount of yellow in the skin not so much I think here is enough and if you sh if I show you the before and after you see we have much better colors and I like it now more than before so here is the exposure and balance now we go to the contrast for the contrast node I go to my color wheels and here I want to decrease the lift around minus 3 and I want to add gain to my footage to make it more pop and for the log wheels I always use the shadows in order to add contrast to my black points as you see here if I show you the before and after you can add contrast to the blacks but you do not add contrast to the lower mid tones and shadows you only add them to the blacks of the video which is really nice I always use this option and for the mid tone details I want to decrease the mid tone details so we have much more softer skins and I always use this option for my portrait videos and I really like it if I show you the before and after you see how much progress we made till here 
and now we go to the color slice node. For the color slice node, I want to play with my yellows here in the color slice section. I want to decrease the luminosity of yellows. As you see, when I decrease it, you see how much pop the subject gets compared to the background and it pops out from the background which is really nice and then I want to decrease the saturation of these yellows so we have much more separation in both terms of contrast and saturation which is really nice as you see here such a beautiful option we have in the latest version of DaVinci Resolve. Now I go to my next note which is soften and sharpen and I search for the soften and sharpen effect and here I want to remove a little bit of texture from the skin and the subject because I want to make this portrait video so much dreamy and surreal that is why I'm doing this and I want to remove some of the texture from the skin so this is why I'm doing this I want to play with the texture as you see here if I show you the before and after you just need to play with these sliders to achieve your desired results depending on your footage and again I say that it's really important to select these numbers depending on your footage and the quality of your footage you cannot select the same numbers as I'm doing here for your footage you should achieve what you want depending on your footage and at last you can use the global blend option to set the opacity for your changes and I want to set it around 70% which is uh, I think good for this portrait it uh, added a touch of softness, such a beautiful softness to the portrait, which I really like because I want this portrait video to be so dreamy and soft. And I really like this effect for this video. Now let's go to the next note, which is the sharpening note. For the sharpening note, I want to add touch of sharpness to the eyes because we lost a little bit of sharpness with the softened note. So here I go to the blur and sharpen and I add 0.44 sharpness and I want to decrease the scaling which you can check with the A and B option here. I do not want it to be so much all over on the face. I want to emphasize more on the eyes. So I decrease this around five or six. Now we see it is more on the eyes and eyebrows, which is really nice. You can see how this sharpening effect works on the eyes of the subject, which is really nice. Now for the next note, which is vignette, which I really like it. It's my favorite option in all of my color gradings I always do the vignette option I want to reverse it and give it so much softness and now I go to my curves and I want to decrease this as you see it makes a huge difference I want to go and move a little bit this upper so we do not affect the face of the subject now you see we have a beautiful vignette and we can check the whole before and after till now you see we made a lot huge difference with just little touches which is really nice. Now we get to the last node, which is the dehancer and my favorite part of this color grading because we can achieve that cinematic film look, which is really classic and gives you that filmic vibe with the dehancer plugin. I really like this plugin and I use it for most of my color gradings. And here I drag and drop the dehancer. And now we want to start with selecting a good film option. And I chose the Fuji Chrome CDU for this specific portrait video which is really beautiful i really like that warm red tones which this film gives to this portrait video and here was my film selection for this portrait video now for the film developer option i want to make it enabled and i add a touch of contrast boost now i want to add a touch of pop to my whites and i want to make it pop so i bring down the white point and as you see if i show you the before and after it just adds a little bit of pop to my highlights which makes the contrast more bright and I really like it and for the print option I always use the tonal contrast which I really like it adds a beautiful contrast to my mid-tones and I set it always around 2.53 depending on my footage I really like this option and here was my tonal contrast settings now we get to the loveliest part of the dehancer plugin which I truly like and love it because I create so much beautiful color palettes using the color head I enable this option now for the yellow and blue i want to add more warm to this footage so i decrease it towards the yellow 
I want to go up to around a minus 18. As you see, it adds so much yellow, but we see that we have so much green. Now we want to adjust the magenta and green. So I decrease it towards the magenta. And as you see, now we have removed some of that green. Now we see that our footage is so much red. We want to decrease the red. So again, we go towards the cyan and I go around minus 12. I think it's good. We have now such a good balance between the yellow and red. I want that brownish tone, which is really classic. Now, another important option is the shadow tone, mid-tone tones, and highlight tones, which blends these tonalities together and is really important. I want to increase the shadow tone. As you see, if I increase it, I add the red to my shadows, which I wanted to have red tones in the shadows. And now for the mid-tones, I want to again add so much red and warm colors to my mid-tones by increasing this mid-tone slider. As you see, I add so much warm to the face and the mid-tone areas. And now for the highlight tones again, I want to increase it. So we have that warm tone as you see in the hat. If I change it, you see how beautiful it blends those warm tones in the highlights. Now I think it's a beautiful tone across the footage, which is really nice. You see how much difference this Dehancer plugin makes and I really like the effect we get with it. This is it for the color head. Now we want to add film grain and here by default it is set on 35 millimeter ISO 250, but I want to select the 35 millimeter ISO 50. I do not want so much film grain just a tad bit and for the bloom I always enable this and I increase it you see so much bloom it makes the portraits really dreamy I really like this option for my portrait videos it makes them so dreamy and I love it now for the film damage option I want to enable it and increase it to the maximum number as you see we get so much damage on the film and it reminds us as the film stocks of the old times which is really nice and here again we have the vignette option which again you can enable if you like i do not want it to be so much big i just want a little bit because i used to add a vignette with my own properties in the vignette node i just add a tad bit here with the dehancer plugin not so much and here it was for the dehancer node as you see it made a huge difference and made the portrait really classic and really moody and I really like the vibe of it and here you can see the overall before and after how far we came with the DaVinci Resolve options and at last the Dehancer note which I really like for this portrait video. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial guys. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask them in the comment sections. I truly appreciate your warm support and all the love which you give to my channel and I will be seeing you in my future videos. Goodbye.